wonderful speaker for the first talk of day uh, three <laughs> of this debug is Julia Westberg. And um, here you go. Thank you very much. So good morning, everyone. I hope uh, everyone has at least had a bit of coffee and maybe some tea. So we can start with our talk about RECO, how to reboot agriculture. So I'm uh, actually sitting on the Swedish countryside. It's surprisingly sunny this uh, morning. No one would have expected that. And I was uh, thinking we can talk a bit about agriculture and what we can do with that. So the thing is that, I'm sorry, we are there. We should be. Uh, Reiko is, uh, says real consumption på svenska or real consumption in English. And it is actually a movement that started in Finland originally, but that by now is, has kind of spread all over Scandinavia. And uh, it's a grassroots movement. So it's basically founded by the people for the people and organized by the people. So think about that you want to go to the supermarket and you kind of want to buy, let's say, a bunch of tomatoes. And normally it's quite hard to know where are the tomatoes from, what has been doing done to my tomatoes, how far have they been transported. And Reiko just really cuts out the middleman. So Reiko is your neighbor that grows the tomatoes. It's like, hi, you want to buy tomatoes from me? You're like, oh yeah, that would be great. Let's buy tomatoes. Um, so, and the one of the things with this kind of markets is I had I think you maybe know that from the places where you live, where you have farmers markets. Farmers markets are quite a restricted thing because there's rules and regulations and it's not really, not everyone can participate. You need to actually be a professional farmer. Uh, the cool thing with Reiko is that it's people meeting and exchanging goods, but the actually selling part has happened before over the internet. And since it's quite hard to regulate a bunch of people that just meet up and exchange resources. So you kind of, at least for Scandinavia, we have found a way to be outside of those regulations, while on the other side, through group control, being able to keep a very good and high standard, both on quality, but also like the ecological side of things and uh, transportation and all of those. Um, so this is like the general the general movement. Then since it's a grassroots movement, there is like no bigger organization. It's basically when people think, oh, I want to start one of those rings, then they can just do that and try it. And this is what I did 2019 in a small town called Herby in the south of Sweden. So a bit about Herby. Herby is a small town on the countryside in Sweden. So we're talking like 50,000 people max, let's say low income, education, yeah, it's not that great. Conservative structures, yes, very much. I uh, don't think I need to say how people are mostly voting here neither. So it's not really a place where you would expect sustainable change. Um, but since two, in 20, 2021, we have come to 2,500 members in this ring. And that is actually really cool. So how did we do that? With communication. And then you get all these really nice things as a sustainable catalyst where you have people actually being able to try. Because you don't need to be a professional farmer to be part of a RECO group. So if you just grow tomatoes and you have 20 tomatoes too much, you can actually put up your 20 tomatoes for sale and try. Is this actually something that I would like? Over this Rico group, you can see what are the demands, what do people want, what do people like? So, and then apparently we are a bit running out of time already. So this is just showing actually the progress of when you keep on going and you people start to talk about and you start spreading things over social media, how you can get from a quite small group to a quite big group with over 25 people producing the food and over 2000 people being able to buy the food. So what kind of challenges do we have? Um, we have a problem of accessibility. <laughs> the thing is, in Sweden, these groups are organized over Facebook groups. I don't think here I need to tell you why that is a problem. I would really love hearing different, like, how could we solve that? Uh, I will just say why we actually choose Facebook. 
because we want everyone to be able to participate mainly also older people living on the countryside that basically the smartphone they have started to be okay with that but so much more mm, that's hard so this really like it is a, it is very difficult to find a good balance between okay how much how how far can we push things there uh, the same goes for payment methods in uh, Scandinavia. We have quite easy solutions for that, but I know, for example, in Germany, that that's not as easy. Um, you need to have a good location. It needs to be big enough so that actually you can all meet up there. Corona doesn't make that any easier. Now you need to have even more space, um, and you need to get actually you you need to get the movement going. So you need to kind of push through a few months, maybe even a year, until there's people that heard of it and until the talk is around. But then it gets then it, then when it, once it rolls, it's kind of does that fairly fairly automatic. Um, also, you need to keep the transport efficient. So just because it's small scale, scale produced doesn't mean necessarily that on a cost on a transportation level it's more energy efficient. So the bigger the ring gets, the more people are coming. You maybe need to find ways to ensure that. So, um, yeah, so what I kind of want to just a bit maybe help inspire is like, think about start more of those rings. Try to get the idea a bit outside of Scandinavia because it's really cool. And it's generally quite easy thing to do choose a communication platform, think about maybe find something better than Facebook, uh, look at the local laws and regulations. How can you get around that? There should be a way to get around that. And then find people that grow tomatoes, cucumbers, maybe someone that has some chickens or some milk farmer that is really tired of just being screwed for the prices of the milk. Uh, yeah. And of course, the more products you have and the more producers, the more people will actually come and buy their food at those small, small scale markets, basically. So, yeah, that was that. I realized that was very little time for a quite interesting topic. But uh, if anyone has questions, I think we will take these after the talk. So thank you very much. Thank you. That was really interesting. Um, it's a quite radical approach to uh, buying local, actually. So um, I'm totally in. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do not have yet any questions in the pad. So uh, for the people who are already uh, watching the stream in the morning, um, please hop over to the questions pad. You find the link in the schedule. Um, and uh, I have a question. Um, did you uh, have a look into um, solutions like Mobilizon or something um, additionally to, to Facebook to organize the groups and, and the, the events? Yeah, there is actually an app developed uh, called Local Food Notch at the moment, where we kind of have hopes that it's going to be um, a maybe not a replacement but uh, that it can help on the way um the they have been doing quite some beta tests and i hope i hope i hope that maybe by then next year we can start to implement it the problem is that local food notch works a bit more like an online store so you would need to have people putting up the products on both sides and um that is kind of something that we would like to avoid. I think it depends then also a bit of where is your market located. If you're actually close to one of the big cities with a younger, um, yeah, younger crowd that you want to attract, I think there it's a lot easier. Um, on the more rural areas, countryside, maybe we and uh, we have talked about if we should just also have uh, it actually on paper that we put up a paper somewhere and people can just write up there orders um hmm. we'll see okay so this is um this also is, um answers my next question uh for the um uh the, the people or your audience that you're you're trying to reach or the people to to uh, engage um you have um more older people or more younger people or is it completely mixed it's quite mixed but uh, I would say it depends quite much on the location. If you're uh, like in Herbie on the countryside, it's a lot of older people. 
And um, there, for me, that is actually also the kind of group I want to attract because the youngers have kind of learned about like ecological food and uh, being a bit more aware. But the older generation still just goes to the supermarket and buys their bacon that's produced in Denmark without really thinking about it. And that is one of the nice things of Reiko that you actually you build a connection with the person producing your food. And that can really change your approach on food completely. Um, so, so, so it depends quite a lot on the location. If we have, if we talk about, for example, Stockholm, there the age um, is a lot younger. I think there may be an average, we are around 30 to 40. And I would say in my, in my ring, it's the average is more 50 to 60. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah. Um, we had, we do uh, got questions in the pad. Um, maybe that one is, is quite fitting. Um, what about analog communications like posters, flyers, probably newspapers, and so on? We have we have done quite some analog um, communication. It's a bit of a challenge since the people organizing it are non, are often producers or customers as well. So there's not really a budget for actually marketing. But um, we could we we got a hold on quite some 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 nice prints that we were able to print small scale wise, and then it's about this getting this ball to roll. After a while, we actually had the local newspapers were like, "Oh, I've heard that you are standing there sometimes giving out food. So what is that? Can we come?" And um, that was the, that. I mean, if you actually get that kind of audience, that is really amazing. Um, before we had that, and with kind of no budget existing, with analog communication, what I did is basically I took my bike and then I just drove around to a lot of small farms and was like, hi, have you here heard about this thing? It's called Reiko. And do you want to sell your products? And talk to everyone that did not want to hear about it. <laughs> mm. But that helped a lot. Um, another question we got is, uh, how do people uh, set their prices? Uh, is there a guidance for that? There is no guidance, but since you have a group of producers and everyone can see each other's prices, it's quite self-regulating, actually. Um, we encourage, as uh, the administrators normally have an eye on that, so we kind of encourage people to take good prices like even if you just have 20 eggs to sell you can't go it's really not good if you go with your prices below the person that actually is making a living out of that uh so there's a lot of self-regulation about that and trying to keep to keep things kind of level and equal but uh, so far that has been working out quite well and um with producers and Reiko rings, often they are not only producing for one ring, but for a few in an area of, let's say, 50 to 100 kilometers in Sweden at least. Uh, so then they actually also talk to each other and to the other rings. And if someone then realizes, oh, but this person sells their eggs way too cheap, they actually will kind of be someone asking them, hey, could you think about the pricing of your eggs? It's really a problem for us. So for that has been working out really good. And on the other side, if you cut out the middleman, you're able to provide a lot better prices for, mm. for like for the quality that you get. Okay. Um, how do you deal with uh, misharvest versus promises? It's not as much of a problem because if we compare it, for example, to the German oh what is it called um where you where you're part of a farmer of a farm basically you 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 buy a share of a farm um solidarische landwirtschaft i think you call it um there you kind of promise what you're going to deliver with reiko you just put up each week you kind of have a look what can i sell this week and then you just sell that so if there's misharvest too bad for the customer, but then that year there's not going to be that many tomatoes. Um, and that means that also if you actually get too much of something, you can just put it off, uh, put it up and be like, okay, I have a, lot, a shit ton of tomatoes, here you go. So for most people, it actually has turned out that Reiko Ring is a very good buffer. Some of them that are a bit 
further on the journey of being full-time farmers, for example. They have some restaurants that they have contracts with. But after the things they have sold to the restaurant are gone, they're still like, oh God, so much, so much resources. What should I do with that? And then they sell that on Reiko. Hmm. I think we have time for one more question. <laughs> um, have you thought about linking it to food waste avoidance, as in getting shops and supermarkets to donate leftover food to give away or redistribute? Redistribute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have thought about that, especially since uh, food sharing is sadly in Sweden not at all very common. But the thing with donating food gets you in a legally different spot. And um, that is something that we haven't really figured out a good way to work around. It would need to be very under the radar because we are not allowed to sell food at the spot where we're meeting because then we would be a farmer's market, unlike an official farmer's market. And then we would need to follow the regulations for official farmer's marketing. So if I'm giving away food, that's ca that is very, very on the edge. Um, so, so far, we sadly haven't really figured out a good way to integrate food waste in a bigger area. I'm hoping that through awareness, we're actually getting somewhere that the better relationship people get with their food and with the producers, the more they actually will value food and the less food, more food waste they will produce, hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, there's another question for the price in the path, but I think it is already uh, answered. So for the people who ask it, just watch in the uh, real life. Um, uh, yeah, we're unfortunately out of time. It was really interesting. Uh, thank you very much, Julia. I hope we'll have another talk uh, about the topic um, at one of uh, the next house events. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day.